Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Sokka here, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. And when we last left off, we did Acapello 13, which is, you know, sort of simulated the Apollo 13 mission with a lot more explosions as per Kerbal. We did Acapello 15 in the first time around, which leaves us to Ziggy Kermit and the spiders from Duna. And as you can see, I have the high score of 13,000, and in fact, I got the bronze, silver, and gold award. Some behind the scenes, I made sure I designed a rocket that actually worked, spent a few hours on it, and hopefully I can replicate that today. So, it's going to be sad to see this go, but we will reset, restart, and start. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the rocket that I know works. This is my Duner 4. We have all of the scientific instruments on this top section. The survey scanner here, all powered by a Probodobodyne HEC2 with two RA2 relay antennas. We have our uh, inline stabilizer and RCS tank. The rest of our scientific instruments wrapped on that RCS tank, we have a service bay with the antenna inside. And then the, here is our nuclear engine uh, on a FLTX 1800 fuel tank. And that is about the center of mass for this particular section. So four, uh, four directional RCS thrusters. And that's powered by this drive section here and the skipper engine, which is powered by this Kerbodyne S1440 uh, powered by a Rhino engine. And it keeps on going with two S4128 fuel tanks and five Mastodon liquid fuel engines. So this thing is a beast and monstrosity, but it is one that I know works. So let's get to the launch pad. All right, I see that you built the probe even though I warned you about the Duna threat. At least no Kerbonaut will risk its life on this nonsense of a mission. Yeah, you can say that again, PR Kerman. Uh, let's reach 200k apoaps and periaps. So, SAS on full power. We want to go pretty much straight up. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, good launch. Away we go. The trickiest part is getting our gravity turn in. Uh, much like the last rocket, if this thing starts nosing over, it's going to fall over very quickly. But once it picks up speed, it wants to pretty much go in a straight line. So we have to really get the, the best of both worlds here. We want the rocket to pitch over, but then again, we do not want it to, uh, to keep on pitching over. I think that's fine. We'll go prograde on the SAS now. So as you can see, the rocket is a little unsteady in the center. Let's go ahead and throttle down to two thirds here while we get through the thick part. It's a little unsteady, but it is staying right there in the velocity vector, which is all we can really ask of it. We're about halfway burned through this section. Let's pick up a little bit more speed and pitch over just a touch more if we can. The rocket is really weak in the center, and that's gonna sort of throw our inclination off of the 90. So we'll have to do sort of a correction whenever we are done here. All right, that should be fine. Let's take a look at the map. And indeed, we are trending a little bit south. We want to go a little bit more north. So let's go full power. Oh, easy there, buddy. There we go. There's our orbital trajectory. And then once we engage this second segment, the rocket becomes a whole lot more stable, not so wonky and top heavy, as you can see. Big booster section is gone, and away we go. All right, we need to pull up north pretty substantially, and we can do that with this particular segment. Let's go stability assist and keep it pointed down. Sort of drag our velocity vector back towards the 90. And then once we start getting that uh, inclination set, we'll go prograde. And we're a little bit low. Looks like we need to go a little bit more north indeed. But there's 200K right there. Hopefully this is within tolerance. So we'll do something like that. 
204 by 194. Let's go ahead and pitch on over to our maneuver node. And we kind of want to adjust our inclination as well, I think. Something like that will be like a little short, but not too awful bad. A 195 by 204 is good enough for government work. Now that we're out of the atmosphere, I'll go ahead and deploy and get our solar panels extended here. We brought two Gigantor solar panels, which should be good enough to keep this rocket under us. All right, so we need about a 46 second burn, so I will go ahead and speed up until we are ready to go. Missed the burn just a little bit, but not bad. This should be uh, close enough for government work. Uh, what we're going to be doing is using this entire stage here to circularize if we can. And then we can even... You know what? That would be fine. Uh, we have one more stage here that is not powered by the nuclear engine. And that is powered by the skipper. And that should be more than capable of getting us out to Duna once we complete that. All right, there we go, about halfway through our maneuver. And this Mastodon is a, or Rhino, is a pretty monstrositous uh, engine, that is for sure. Really packs a punch up here in the vacuum, and uh, everything should be fine. So 500 meters a second, I think we'll have more than enough fuel uh, to accomplish that which we can use then a little bit of this fuel to conduct the uh, orbital transfer. All right, down to 150 meters a second. I'll go down to half throttle or so. There is the orbital flip camera change down to one third throttle. And boom, 0.1 meter a second. Let's see if Mission Control likes that one. Now you're in orbit, we're aiming to reach Duna's sphere of influence. Plan the maneuver carefully. You don't want to end up arrow breaking on Jewel. That is the truth. All right, so let's get out here. Keep on scrolling way out until we see the red line. And there is Duna. We'll set that as our target. Now what we want to do is basically pick up our speed relative to the sun. And because Kerbin is moving in this direction, we want to also move in that direction even faster to raise our... Uh, apoaps or altitude as it were to re-intersect Duna. We want to do that on the back side of Kerbin here at the Terminator and as we accelerate you can see our orbital trajectory and that is really not what we're going for. We want that orbital trajectory to go in the direction of Kerbin's orbit. That way we just pick up speed. And actually right there we almost have an intersection here. We'll just keep on. There we go. Periaps with Duna. We can adjust that once we get uh, out there in the void with RCS thrusters. A little dab will do us. And it's only a 40 second burn with this main engine. So I am guessing maybe a one minute burn. So I'll burn at T minus 30 seconds. So I'll go ahead and get myself orientated and begin the burn. All right, three, two, one, fire. And we're about to lose this stage here. And skadoosh, and off we go. So yeah, that ended up being a one minute, seven second um, estimated burn with this engine, but that's fine. We we started burning a little bit early to anticipate the lack of thrust that this engine has, but a higher specific impulse uses the fuel more efficiently. And once we get into Duna, this stage will be used for the slowing down. Uh, once we do arrive at Duna, we want a 60K orbit around the planet, and that isn't high enough for atmosphere, so we will not be able to use any aero braking well I mean we could we could get cheeky and drop it into say 30k aero brake the majority of it and then circularize after that could be a thing but I don't want to risk burning everything up 
Plus, we have more than enough fuel to do the business. That's us leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. Let's go ahead and bring our throttle right down and prepare to cut. Point 0.5 meters a second, let's see what that does for us. We'll scroll right on out, see if we get that. We do indeed, there is the Duna Periaps. We are going to get an encounter. So what I will do is I will warp out here for 18 days, keeping our solar panels uh, in the breeze here. And once we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence right there, now we are around the sun Kerbol, and we'll be able to make our finite adjustments from here using RCS because when you're this far away from your target, a little dabble, do you? Yeah, this is the uh, the farthest from home we've ever been here on a mission. There is Kerbin way back there. We're leaving it at a pretty good clip. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is select and focus on Duna, and we can see our approach is uh, pretty wonky, if I do say so myself. Let's turn on SAS and point towards our prograde marker. And then once we get to prograde, we will burn RCS and see if that brings us to this side of Duna. We want to be on the far side of Duna because that's the way the orbit is going to go, so we want to ensure that that is indeed the case. RCS and thrust. And indeed, that's bringing it closer, but not fast enough. Let's go ahead and just give it a little bit of throttle and watch that periaps come down. And it should go on this side of Duna. That's gonna be the ultimate goal here. So a little bit of thrust, we're gonna go over the top and whoop, and cut. Didn't mean to go full speed there, but that should be fine. Uh, let's RCS and pull back. All right, we're, let's just do that with our uh, main engine here. We'll flip on around and just give it a little bit of throttle we do also need to adjust our inclination, so we will need to come down to where we are equatorial. Uh, Ike orbits Duna in an equatorial fashion, so if we uh, coordinate our orbit to where we are planar with Ike, we should be good. All right, just a little bit of squeeze, and I'm making sure I'm on the right key this time. And as we come over the top, I will cut it. Close enough, RCS can do the rest. Now we want to go anti-normal because we want our inclination to drop. So once we see ourselves orientated anti-normal, we will go ahead and thrust just a little bit more. Just, and... All right, let's just RCS this and fine tune it a bit. Just a touch right there. And we want our peri apps to be 60K. So we can also adjust uh, for there. We'll go ahead and turn, whoops, retrograde. And we'll use RCS to bring this peri apps right down to 60K. And then we just go into hibernation mode and just ride the rest of the way here. All right, there's retrograde. We're just going to use RCS to forward thrust until we see that periaps hit 60K. There we go, something like that. RCS off, SAS off, 58.2, close enough for government work and that will set us up beautifully for the approach to Duna. All right, let's warp here. We've got 154 days until we reach Duna. Just flying right there around Kerbal, and I will see you when we enter Duna's sphere of influence.
I can't believe you actually made it. Well done. Before running your experiments, put Duna 4 in a circular 60k orbit and enjoy the view. And that's what we are going to try to do. You can see we are a little low on our approach. That's why I stopped right at the, um, the, the initial sphere of influence so we have the most time to adjust anything we need to adjust. We're still at 58, so all we need to do is just do a positive inclination change with RCS thrusters. And there we go, bringing that right up. We still have plenty of RCS thrusters to uh, do the work with. So we want to keep as much liquid fuel in here as possible. Then it looks like we need to do a bit of an inclination change when we get there as well. Just sort of point downward and circularize here. There we go, perfect. All right, so now we need to circularize at our maneuver. We need to retrograde this thing around and see how we look. Yeah, something like that should work. 56 by 56, maybe close enough. It looks like a 28 second burn for us and we have more than enough fuel to do that. Let's go ahead and point to our maneuver node and you can see Duna right there looming big, only a we go at T minus 14 and we're going to pretty much drop uh, right there on the right side of Duna. Good thing Ike is not going to give us any issues. All right, there we go. Let's go to the map and go ahead and warp to our next maneuver. And Duna will scream right there. Awesome. T minus one minute. We want to go at T minus 14. Right over the top here. All right, here we go. 18, 17, 16, 15, go. Oh, that was not what I thought it was. Okay, so our orbit may be a little off. Interesting that the engine didn't recalculate. So we're gonna pretty much fly right by the periaps. Luckily, we will be captured. That's going to be the big thing. So let's just keep pointing retrograde. Let's turn off our maneuver node. And let's just watch and see when we get captured at 60K. We are slowing right down. And we still have the entire uh, contents of the nuclear engine to correct ourselves here. And we might need it. So there we go. Periaps at 55. We'll bring this right down to 60 if we can. All right, we'll cut that there. So we were a little late. Let's add a maneuver and shift this orbit right on around. So a three second burn, I think we could do that. So that would put us at a 63 by 71. Okay, let's adjust here. 65 by 72, maybe. 71 by 62, awesome. Let's go ahead and do that maneuver. Only a four second burn. Hopefully it's uh, legit. All right, let's keep on going here. And we want to go at T minus two. And go. And stop. All right, Kerbals. Is that good enough? 
Well done, we'll start a little flyby over the equatorial region to see if we can find anything of interest. We should also conduct and transmit a science report while passing by. You can do it with any scientific device. So we are gonna come right over the top. Let's go ahead and warp here. And it's gonna be a pretty slow uh, maneuver, so I will see you when we get around to the backside. And there we go, inside, you saw the icon disappear. Now we'll go to our barometer, log the pressure data and transmit that data. Aha, wait, everybody knows that the giant robotic spiders live at Dunas Pole, something about the ice and the magnetic field. Change your inclination to fly over the North Pole region right away. Go ahead and conduct and transmit a science report there too. We can't overlook any clues we could get with these scientific gizmos. So now we have to basically uh, turn ourselves right around and go this way. So we'll give a massive inclination change and a massive retrograde approach. Something like that. And something like that, yeah. So we'll go over the top and that'll set us up right there on the south pole. And as you can see, it's a 51 second burn and I don't think we have enough fuel to do that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll probably go at T minus one minute 30 and see what that does for us. Luckily, uh, we can reach the poles at any point uh, from, from any period in the planet. It's not gonna be off um, off the latitude. All right, so I will go ahead and get to that maneuver and see you in just a moment. All right, I'm about to go at T minus 130, and that is just a best guess because I know we don't have 51 seconds of fuel in this particular stage. I could pump some fuel out to make sure that we get it done, which actually might not be a bad idea. Let me do that real quick. So we won't have anything left in our rocket engine, but, well, you know what? I think the specific impulse is not going to be good. All right, strike that. Let's go ahead and fire. And then we will ch do a uh, change over here. All the fuel will be in our nuclear engine tank. And skadoosh. Yeah, and it was a 330. So we were kind of on the ball as far as that's concerned. I'll go ahead and complete this maneuver and be right back with you. All right, we need to go Prograde. All right. Let's get out of time acceleration just a bit. Pick up our periaps if we can. All right. I think we need to go radial out now. until our orbit sort of rounds itself out. And that should be us over the poles. Yes, indeed. There we go. Looking solid. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get over the poles. 
and do our scientific research. I'll be right back with you. All right, you can see the icon disappear. That means we've crossed through the threshold. All right, barometer, go ahead and transmit that data if you please. No trace of giant robotic spiders yet. This could mean only one thing. They're hiding in the South Pole. Go ahead and fly by the South Pole immediately. You know the drill. Conduct and transmit a science report from there. And you can see our nav ball shift. We've flown over the top, and now we are going to be coming down to the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Warp to the bottom, and I will see you at the South Pole. All right, we are over the South Pole. The uh, node has gone away. Let's go ahead and log the data and transmit. Data is uploaded. All right, knock it off. There's no evidence of any giant robot spiders, and there never was. We can't let paranoid delusions dictate our scientific agenda. Otherwise, we'll never make any real progress. Still, you collected great data from around Duna and have this enough to spend months analyzing it. Spiders or no, this was invaluable. It's time to let Duna 4 take a well-deserved rest. Crash it in the name of science. And for extra points, do it in the designated area. So let's see what designated area they want it in. And you know what we could do? Depending on how this thing rotates, we can wait for it to pivot under us and have it come crashing down. Like come over the top and just basically land directly on it. That way we don't have to worry about an inclination change. Might be worth doing. Although, if we end up on the wrong side of Duna, that would be pretty terrible. Or we could do it the ye old-fashioned way and basically pivot, our, make a maneuver node here, pivot the inclination, and try to catch it on its way up. So if we did do something like that, what would that look like? We'll add a maneuver. We'll pivot this thing right around. Then we'll need to add a lot of retrograde speed to get it to smash. All right, pull up the retrograde. Pull up the inclination. We want to sort of lead it a bit. Something like that. If we were to pivot it on its nose, and that's a three minute, 53 second burn, and I'm not too sure how I like that. So just to make sure that we can crash in the area, I'm going to wait for this planet to rotate around until this spot gets under our trajectory and then just come straight down right on top of it. So I will be right back. Well, impatience got the better of me. We have a 1 minute and 42 second burn to do. Well, a 324, but 142 is our halfway mark and boosh, full power. Let's go ahead and just Alt-4, Speed-4 through this thing and see if we come down over the top. So I will complete this burn and be right back with you. All right, burn is completed. Looks like we are going to maybe overshoot just a bit let's go retrograde if we can here slow ourselves down about right there the atmosphere is very thin so i don't think we'll have to worry about really overshooting it to get down one thing we might have difficulty with, though, is being too far out front. Okay, that's the wrong way. We want regular old normal. We want to go to the west. Yeah, something like that. Just using up this fuel to sort of fine-tune our approach, you know? I think that should actually be fine. 
So now we're just at a uh, the victim of Sir Isaac Newton, and we might as well just keep our uh, solar panels deployed. Oh, and we're in the atmosphere now. So we should be okay. There we go. Now the, the spacecraft is starting to interact with the atmosphere. So I'll just uh, keep on heading on down and see you when we crash. Just keeping ourselves pointed up, if we can, sort of raising our altitude back up. Yeah, we might actually have to uh, really go for it here. We don't want to completely get ourselves circular. Yeah, so let's just uh, do something like so. At least until, you know, at least until we run out of fuel. All right, let's see how that does. All right, Apoaps is dropping. And we are looking to be coming over the top of it. Certainly not bad. The atmosphere will continue to uh, interact with us and bring us down much, much faster than we anticipate. But as far as direction goes, we're pretty much spot on with the rotation of Duna. Yeah. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, by the time we, uh, we crash... We should be right over the top of it. Yeah, that's going to be fine. As a matter of fact, what we can do is point west. And get ourselves a... Uh, a little closer. Go west, young man. Nope, that's east. Here's west. Go! Yeah, we'll just keep it pointed west if we can. We're really interacting with the atmosphere now. But I think we will be close enough that that is going to count. Alright. Let's flip west. Stability assist. Oh, there goes the solar panels. Yeah, we're just falling in now. Retrograde. We're at the mercy of Sir Isaac Newton now. Can we turn prograde and really get this thing going? I think we can. Nah, we're like a, a we're like a dead stick. But here we go. They might have wanted us to smash down here in this mountain, and smash we will indeed. There's grounds clutter and skaboom. And there we go. Thirteen thousand bronze, silver, and gold award. I was able to replicate what we were going to do, and that is awesome indeed. So, as of this patch, that is the last mission, ladies and gentlemen, of Kerbal Space Program. In the meantime, if they release something else, I will play. I might do a career mode in this, who knows? But that's going to do it for me for now, ladies and gentlemen. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next Kerbal Space Program video. Take care.